So season one is here, and I know that we all want to finish this new battle pass as fast as we can. Whether you don't have much time to play each day, maybe you want to get it done so you don't have to worry about it anymore, or maybe you want all of those amazing boomerang cosme- oh wait, hold up. Or maybe you just want to look fabulous with all your fancy skins. You might be trying to farm your battle pass XP by farming your easy incursions on repeat or trying to complete random missions around Metropolis, or by running around the map trying to find random cargo knots. But in this video, I will be showing you the method I used to gain about 5,000 to 6,400 battle pass XP per hour from just farming cargo knots. That means if we assume you maintain an average of about 5,000 battle pass experience per hour, it would only take you about 15 hours, give or take, to fully max out all 76 tiers of the battle pass from just this method. But there's also the daily contracts that you can complete and the daily care packages as well that you can also use to expedite the leveling process of the battle pass. So if we assume that you're getting the 500 battle pass XP for your daily legendary care package on top of doing your three daily contracts for the 1050 50 battle pass experience, that means we're getting about 1,550 battle pass experience per day. That's a little bit over a level and a half per day, plus the 3,000 battle pass experience that you can get if you're in a clan that managed to actually get the clan care package to legendary that week. Which means in a week, you would get about 13,850 battle pass experience, or just almost 14 levels. So you would technically finish the battle pass in just over a month of only doing the daily contracts and daily care packages. But that's assuming that you have an active clan that's really playing the game and getting the legendary care package every week. If you don't have a clan, then the time it would take you to complete the battle pass just from getting the daily contracts and the daily care packages from shooting the drones down, which linked to the drone farm in the top right hand corner, would still take about 7 weeks to complete. That's almost 2 whole months of the 3 month long battle pass and the 3 month long season that would be spent grinding for battle pass experience. So you definitely want to be doing multiple things on top of your daily grinds for the drones and the contracts. This will severely help speed up the process immensely. And just recently in the developer update articles, they announced that they're going to be doubling the amount of battle pass experience that you get from missions. So theoretically, instead of getting 50 battle pass experience per incursion, you'd be getting about 100, which means it would take you 10 incursions to get one level of the battle pass or 760 incursions to get all 76 tiers. Hey there, post-production J here. The patch actually just just came out earlier today when I'm recording this on April 11th. So now patrols, strongholds, incursions, and smash and grab missions now reward you with 100 battle pass experience, which is up from the 50 experience it used to be. And it also doubles the cargo knot battle pass experience as well. So now cargo knots are the best source for battle pass experience once again. When I was first testing out this method for the video, they were the best source of battle pass XP back then by far. But then they announced the doubling of the battle pass XP for missions and it made them about equal. But now that we have the patch notes, they actually did buff cargo knots and their XP for the battle pass as well. So once again, cargo knots are reigning supreme. So don't worry, all of the stats that I'm going to go over in this video for XP per hour or XP per drop or XP per incursion, all of those stats and numbers are actually the new versions after the patch. So don't worry, all the numbers in this video are still accurate, at least for now. And like we mentioned before, if you did all of your daily or weekly things in the game for that week with an active clan at the same time as you grinded your incursions for the battle pass experience, it would still take you about 624 incursions to get the max battle pass level. And without an active clan, it would take you 651 incursions to do that as well. So depending on how fast you can actually complete incursions will determine how fast you can complete the battle pass with incursions. Right, so let's assume you are farming incursions on the lowest difficulty just to get through them quicker over the weekend. If you are able to complete Laugh Riot in about 2 minutes, that means you can complete about 30 incursions per hour at 100 battle pass experience per incursion, which gives you about 3000 battle pass experience or basically 3 levels in the battle pass. So in a weekend, you would get the weekly clan care package 3000 battle pass experience, plus the 4560 battle pass experience from daily contracts and the daily care packages. That means you would still need to grind 684 
incursions to complete the rest of the battle pass. And if you were able to get about 3,000 battle pass experience per hour from farming incursions, it would still take you about 23 hours to get the rest of the battle pass unlocked. So it is entirely possible to spread out that time into three different seven and a half hour gaming sessions. But just like we talked about with certain other farms in the game, this is only if you can complete them super fast. If you take about four minutes per run of Laugh Riot, that means you're only completing about 15 incursions per hour, which is only giving you 1500 battle pass experience or only one and a half levels per hour. So that's not a bad method if you're able to run them super quickly, but I mean, running basically eight hours worth of incursions isn't everyone's idea of a good time. So if you're looking for something to mix it up, something where you're able to put on music and chill or watch a show while you grind for battle pass levels, the farm method I'm going to show you today is perfect for anybody who's on a tight schedule and only has like 30 to 60 minutes to play in the morning or maybe a few hours at night. It is super simple and gives you great battle pass experience no matter your skill level. This farm is actually the same one I showed off in my previous video that I uploaded about how to farm the cargo knots. So if you do want to learn a bunch of useful info on the method that we're going to use today, I will leave a link to that in the top right hand corner as well, it's very helpful info. The original intent of that video was to actually show you how to farm Permethium, but unfortunately Rocksteady changed how much Permethium you get from Cargonauts from 1500 Permethium per Cargonaut all the way down to 200 Permethium like a day after I uploaded the video, so that's like super cool. <laughs> But fear not, that video and all that info is still useful. Probably more useful than ever before because now the cargo knots drop battle pass experience. So even though it's been an emotional roller coaster, it's still relevant. And even though the map layout has changed slightly with the new season, we can still get the same amount of cargo knots as before, maybe even more. I will go into that here in a second though. But in addition to the cargo knots dropping less Promethium and the map layout changing slightly, we now also have randomized spawn points when you first load into the world. Which sounds like a bad thing, but check this out. Each spawn point when you first load in that I've had in the new season are all beyond 600 meters from the Hall of Justice. So these new spawn points don't actually mess up the farm at all. And only one of these spawn points puts you on the edge of a combat zone for some reason. You will see the red laser from a sniper across the map staring you right in the face. And all you have to do is turn around immediately and run out to the street here and you will be safe and fine and able to fast travel. All of the other spawn points though let you fast travel immediately after skipping the seasonal intro camera pan though. If anything, they made it even easier because now when you're done doing the route, you can just save and quit near the Hall of Justice and it will spawn you across the map anyway. Then you just fast travel back like we just did before. So now there's no need to spend time running back to Wayne Bank to save and quit. And I do need to say major kudos to Rocksteady. They optimized the load times quite a bit it seems. It used to be 30 seconds to quit out and 30 seconds to load back into the game. So one minute total to do that process. But now it's like 30 seconds total to quit out and load back in. So in a lot of ways, this farm is even better than it was before. And speaking of ways this farm is even better than it was before, I'm actually finding more cargo not spawns than before due to the map changes. Before, there was this whole area down here in the streets that wasn't really possible to farm before, but now it's been changed with this like city street area mixed with a cargo container area. Now each lap of this farm will take you about 6 to 8 minutes depending on how fast you are checking all of the spots. And so you can do 2 runs of this in about 12 to 16 minutes. And during that time, I was able to find about 10 to 20 cargo knots. It is a bit of a range, but regardless, it's still between 1000 and 2000 battle pass XP every 15 minutes. That's one or two levels of the battle pass in 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes or less, I was averaging about 13 cargo knots or more, which means this method can give you an average of 1300 battle pass experience in 15 minutes. Basically, this method can give you 5000 to 6400 battle pass XP per hour and about 8,000 battle pass XP if you find 20 cargo knots every time. And if you're doing your contracts and killing the drones while you do this, you will be earning even more in that same time frame. But now let's jump into how to actually do this farm for the battle pass experience. So just load up into the game and fast travel to the Hall of Justice from there. Then from there, once you walk outside, you can just check like last time to check across the way by these buildings for any Cargonauts. You can either kill these Cargonauts right now or save them for last. I prefer to save them for last. Then I jump up and I check on top of this tower on her right. And I check on top of the Hall of Justice over here further to the right. Or basically behind you. This is easier done on Joker, but it can be done on most characters though. If there's one on the tower, save it for last. But if there's one on top of the Hall of Justice, you can get it now. 
After that, go to the Joker sign across the street and check this building here next to where Hack can actually spawn at. Some of these spawns are the same as the last video, like the spawns on this building here. There's like four spots they can spawn in right here. Then check up right next to Hack up here and just around the other side of the building on the billboard and lower platforms like before. Then run back up and check on this building over here. Just like last time, they can spawn on this metal platform and the wall behind it. But now they can also spawn on the wall just to the right of that behind this tree here. If you don't see one around those spots, you want to head down to your right near the presence and check on the buildings near the Mahones, Ma Mahone? Mahone sign? and across the street by the building with the flag on it. If you still don't see one there, check right next to that on this purple palm tree in the round present platform as well. Then head down and check near this green lantern Justice Day banner. They can also be on the side of that building somewhere and on top, so just look around all over. Then look just across the street to your right from there and check a couple of spots in this general area near this building and on top of the metal platform where the tank normally is and by the base of the water tower. And then last spot for this area is up on top of the railway way up here. They can be really sneaky up there, so just do a quick check and then run off. And that should be every spawn point for the Joker sign spawn chunk. Then depending on whether or not you found one on top of the Hall of Justice already or not, you'll either check more spots up there or you'll continue the path. If you did already find one up top, then just skip to this time here for the next set of spots to check after that. But if you did not find one on the Hall of Justice, you can check a few other places. Thankfully, a lot of them are super easy to see by just floating around the building. Like, you can check this walkway down here just across the street from the first buildings where Hack is, and also check the sides where these banners and pillars are, while also checking this roof spot. Sometimes they can spawn on the wall of this upper roof part over here as well. If you don't see one there, just fly up and scan the top a bit more, really looking at those two main pillars towards the front of the building, going around to the other side and checking the pillars and walkways on that side as well. Remember to check down below on this wall section above the rocks here, they can be really low, and on this lower grassy section over here on the right as well. Then pop right back up and look near the back of the building by these car charging stations. Next, move along the pathway to the back edge over here, and that should be every single spawn point for the Hall of Justice spawn chunk. So now, just continue down the street checking the spot right here on the monorail building. Then take a quick look between the monorails as well to see if one spawned there. If not, head down to your right and check on top and underneath of this entrance here. If you don't see one on this side, flip around and check right around the corner near these metal stairs, and then just behind them on the wall over here as well. If you don't see one there, check the rooftops next to you while also checking the alleyways in between them. They can spawn on the cargo container here and just on the other side of this wall here. These are all of the connected spawn points to the Justice Park monorail spawn chunk. So next you want to go around the corner and check on this wall here, in between these trees and on the front side of the dark green building near the subway entrance. Then check on the back side of this building over here on your left while glancing further to your left at these little shops on the pier. After checking those, you want to duck into this walkway here and check for them dangling underneath here. And then after you exit from underneath there, quickly glance to your left and look at the building over there. They can dangle from this little overhang awning over here as well and check the side of the building you just checked above the yellow trailer thing. After checking that, pop up and check this little awning near the Oaktown Ferry Station sign. That should be all of the spawn chunks within the Oaktown Ferry Station chunk. Now, here's where things get a bit different from the last video's route, because Season 1 removed the giant Brainiac chunk here, and now we have actual buildings here. But they're really easy to check, thankfully. All you have to do is jump up and look at the rooftops down by this crash semi-truck trailer, sweep all the way to your right to the top of these apartment buildings, you can do a quick loop around this building here to be really thorough if you want to. Then check underneath this overpass section here and quickly scope down the street to this underground section. Don't worry though, we will check more down there later on. Now after checking all of those areas, hop up and do a very quick check of this section across the street from Hack and the Hall of Justice. They can be on this wall here that says Open Air Mall on it, or just above that on the roof where it says Tommy's Cocktail Bar with neon signs and everything. That should be every spawn point for this public market district chunk here. Now we move back down towards the ferry station and pick up right where we left off while also checking some of the buildings on the right hand side as you run down. They can be really sneaky and hiding inside the square cutout above the underpass and on the wall there as well, right next to it. Next you want to pop up and check the support pillars for the train tracks and the roofs around it as well. They can spawn up there as well. 
Now after that, you move down the street checking the front side of the red building right in front of you, and then look to your left and check the back side of this building here. Then while you're there, you just want to look and do a quick check of this platform right above the water. After that, you want to pop up to the top of the red building you just checked, and check on top of there. And then jump up once more to do a quick scan of the train tracks on top and dangling underneath as well. After you land back on the roof of the red building, check the side of this building here in the alleyway across the street with the clock on it. Now you want to check this roof spot right here across the street. And also look at the monorails right next to you as well. They can sometimes be dangling from the monorails right here, and if they do, you just poke them once with like one bullet, you just shoot them, and they fall right into the water for a very easy kill. And then you want to check the side of the red building that you're actually on top of around here. And then of course you want to check the round platform right next to you as well, and then you want to drop down and check underneath it. After that, pop around to the other side and check the middle of the street by all these cars, sometimes they can just be running around there. Then swoop around and check the wall here by this alleyway. All of these spawn points around the red building are connected in the same chunk I believe. Now while you are over here by this joker section, do a quick search of the joker area down the street. They can sometimes spawn on the water platform here, or by the pier, or these two buildings over here, or on the side of the building with the Wonder Woman statue on top of it. Don't spend too much time actually looking over there though, but if you do find one, you can go over and get it. After that though, run back to this roof spot here that you checked earlier and head further north. You want to check the rooftop around this Lex oil building with the little overhangs and stuff like that and inside of them as well. And so while you're there, you want to check the red brick building across the street so they can spawn on the window right here. You can also take a quick peek near the WGBS tower from there, but don't spend too much time looking over there, just do a quick glance. But after that, you're going to duck down into the section underneath the red building that we just checked. This is the same underground street section we sort of checked earlier. They can be hanging from this archway here, or the one that if you turn around, it's right there underneath this billboard. Then continue further down the road towards the cinema and the PJ Motel and check the wall right here. This is just to double check the spot that we looked at earlier. Sometimes they can be a little weird. Now turn around again and head back to the white building with this delicious looking ad of a burger on the side of it. Once you're there, you jump up all the way to the top. They can spawn on the top of this white building here by these tables and on top of this part just above those. Then, if there's nothing there, you look down and check the brown brick building right next door to that. They can spawn on the smokestack, or on the sides of the building here by the stairs, here on the rooftops on the right, and then on the far left side of the building as well. So then after that, you jump down and check the inside of the stairs to the red brick building there. If nothing is there, you quickly jump up and check near the incursion portal area down the road. That's another frequent spawn for them, but once again, don't look for too long though. If there is one, go get it. If not, go around the brick building and check underneath this entrance by the red carpet area here. They can either be on the red carpet or just around the corner to your right. Then check the back side of this building here near where we first were checking at the beginning. Then you go around the corner from that building and check under this art shop sign as well. All of these spawn points going from the underground to the white building and then ending at the brown brick building and the art shop sign are in the same chunk it seems as well. So now you're going to go down the street but underneath where the tank spawns. So as you do, check the wall on your left side near the Batman Museum. And check the wall on your right side before you go underneath. They can spawn right here on both of these as well. After that, head underneath and check the building straight in front of you. If you don't see one dangling from the overhang awning section here by the Pretzel building, then continue down the street to your left. You want to check on the roof section by the Best Vest building, and down to the right of that. They can spawn here on the roof, over there on the wall in this alleyway, and then a couple of places either on the roof, or the sides of the building around the High Roller Incursion location. So once you found one there, if you did, head down the alley on the opposite side of the street and check underneath the walkway above you. Then turn the corner to your left and check underneath this building's fire escape and bridge above you. After you pop out from the alleyway there, go to your left and check on the side of this building here. It will have a checkerboard floor pattern. 
After that area, now continue down the street to your right and quickly glance to your left and right as you do so, but don't spend too much time looking here either. I don't typically see them spawning much around here. You just want to run down the street to this corner near the cargo container section. Take a quick look in there, but don't take too long. Just mainly check the front of the Hobbs Bay building here, maybe up on the roof if you want to as well, and they can also spawn right below the dock floor sign on the back of the building. or inside the containers over here. But the best spawn location is right here on the side of the containers. If they spawn here, all you have to do is shoot them once and they will fall in the water for a very easy kill once again. After the Hobbs Bay chunk, you want to head down the street back towards the Hall of Justice and look near this giant statue. They can spawn on either the left or right side of the statue or on top of this metal frame here. If you don't see one there, swoop inside the fire station and check in here on the ceiling. Then check the overhang near the rooftop encampment. After that, go across the street between the two restaurants and past the yellow bus stop, and check in there. They can be on the walls or hanging down from the walkways above you. After you check those, jump up and start checking the upper sections as well. I tend to check this spot right here underneath this metal roof, and then I look across the way to the blue building and check near the billboard on that wall as well. And then I keep checking the sides of the buildings around me and all the roofs and everything. Or like the top of the water reservoir over here on this building. All the spawns from the giant statue to the roofs we just checked should all be in either one or two chunks. Then we head closer to the Hall of Justice once more. We're actually going back to that alleyway where we checked underneath the fire escape. But this time, we're going down the street the opposite direction. So instead of heading towards the checkerboard floor building, we're going the opposite way towards this intersection here. It actually has a couple of spots to check. So the first one is looking right up the long staircase towards the top. They can spawn in that archway up top as well. Then you turn directly around and check the wall just above the Shoals, Shoals sign. And then turning left, checking the tiny little rooftop section above the bar right here. And then on the opposite side, you have the spot right here near the intergang graffiti on the wall. After all of those have been checked, head back down the street towards the Hall of Justice entrance once again. But as you do, check the rooftops and all the platforms on your right hand side. Then once you're at the actual entrance, you should be checking the inside and on top of all of these archways before moving past them. After those, you should be able to check the base of the tower from here and the wall on your right at the same time. If you don't find anything there, go to your right and check inside of these archways around the corner. If you still don't see one, check the roofs around you. There can be one on the wall right here, one on this spot just above the wall that we checked on, and then one on the AC vent just across the way. After those, take a quick look on top of the main wall for the Hall of Justice and check at the end of it. Then just pass through this archway over here, and check the other ones near you as well. Don't forget to check inside of all of them and above the main ones too. But that actually completes one loop of the farm. Don't worry though, this will get much, much faster the more that you actually run the route and learn it. Now that I've run this route so many times, I can actually complete one of the laps in about 5 minutes, and a total run, like 2 laps, of this in about 12 to 13 minutes. The hardest part is trying to find every spawn point for these chunks, or if you see a cargo knot super far away and take time to run away to actually kill it. It also helps to know which Karganauts belong to which chunk, because like I mentioned in the previous video, each chunk can only actually have one, maybe two Karganauts in it. So for example, once you learn that the Karganaut you find by hack is the only one for that chunk with the Joker letters in it, you can immediately move to the Hall of Justice one. Once you find the one on the top or sides of the Hall of Justice, you can actually just cross that one off, then you move to the monorail station. And if you find one at the beginning of that chunk on the wall here, you don't have to worry about checking the any other spots around there, because that's the only one for that chunk. So the next possible options are near the corner way down here, and the pier shops, and it just keeps going like that. So while I'm not 100% sure of all the chunks there are, I'm going to try and mark out the ones that I know of so far, so that way you guys know which ones you've already checked, and like where to start and look. To start with, we have the Joker Letters chunk, then we have the entire Hall of Justice chunk, then you have the Monorail Station chunk, then you have the Train Station, and possibly the Oaktown building next to it is in the same chunk, we don't really know. 
Then you have the public market and all of the buildings in the middle of this area here. That's a one whole chunk or possibly two. Then you have the white building here, which might be connected to the red brick building just behind it, but I don't really think so. But the chunk that the red building is actually in looks like this. So it extends all the way out to that wall that you check on the other side of that road there and all the way down that rooftop. Then you have the Lex Oil section and the WGPS tower section over there as well. Then the next one's kind of weird. But you have the brown brick building, the white building, the art shop, and this whole underground section that's another chunk where only one of them can spawn at from what I can tell. Then you have the area by the incursion spawn point, and then you have the Batman Museum, which is a huge chunk as well. And then after that, the next section of cramped city streets seems to be like four chunks of questionable sizes, but I think they would look like this if you were to map them out, but I'm not entirely sure yet though. And then down the road, you have the Hobbs Bay building, which seems to be its own chunk. Then behind that, you have the cargo container area as another chunk. Then the area with the giant statue is another chunk as well. And it actually might be connected to the fire station and the area with the yellow bus bench. Not really sure about that one. And then one of the final chunks you have is the tower right next to the Hall of Justice. Those are all of the chunks that I'm able to identify right now, and they may not be 100% accurate, but the more that we run this route, the more data we can actually gather of the spawning of them. But so far, there's around 20 different chunks that this route can actually go through, maybe even more. That means you have a potential of 20 different cargo nuts that can actually spawn, depending on the RNG of the route. But once you find your own flow and know how your character's traversal can be used optimally to run this route, you can fly through this and can do it in quick glances at certain areas as you go through. In my own personal experience, I found that Joker made this much easier for me due to his ability to literally skateboard surf down the streets, and he has the highest verticality in the game with the fewest button presses needed. King Shark is a close second with this one though. So now you actually have multiple choices on how you want to gather your battle pass experience and how you want to play the game, which is amazing. And I'm hoping Rocksteady does not nerf the battle pass experience that Cargonauts drop because having a choice as to what activity that you want to spend your time doing is actually really important. I prefer doing this over just doing incursions over and over again. Incursions are fun, but this lets my brain just chill and I can talk with chat or watch a show while I do this. And let's not forget that you still get 60,000 credits, 200 Prometheum, 225 precious alloys, 150 Kaluan crystals, and 90 B technology per cargo knot as well. So if you averaged 13 cargo knots, you would get 780,000 credits per run. So in an hour, you'd get about 4.68 million credits. And remember that each run only takes about 12 to 16 minutes, depending on how fast you are able to search and keep moving. Plus, each rooftop turret that you kill gives you like three innertrons. That's the gold material that you're probably all low on like me. And about 20,000 credits from them as well. Plus others, I didn't actually write those down. So this is amazing for just resources if you're running around and killing everything as well. But overall, the Hall of Justice is the best place to farm your battle pass experience and credits due to the fast travel and the density of different chunks. You could even shoot down some drones while you're at this and get your daily care package to legendary. And because they're raising hell playlists don't actually reset when you leave the main menu, only if you leave the game entirely, you can actually complete some of those here as well if they're easy enough. I have completed tier 1 a few times while farming this, but I hope this helped you. If it did, feel free to leave a like on the video. It would mean a lot to me if you did. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future content. I have plenty of other content planned, so I hope you enjoy that as well. And if you want to see a build video for Joker or any other character, let me know in the comments down below. But I also want to give a special shout out to all of the members on this channel. So special thanks goes to my amazing girlfriend, Nerd. Thank you so much for all of your support that you show me. I love you, my Harley. A Marion Spicer, Foxy Luna, Emperor Frieza, BJ, Hobostar, Rabbit, Psych Villain 22, Nanostorm, Dark Dimension, Manny, and Green Ranger 32. Thank you for supporting this channel and for being the nerdiest of the nerds. This community and this channel's growth would not be possible without all of you amazing humans supporting me. So thank you. Now, if you would like to support this channel even further, you can always click that join button on my channel and join the nerdiest of the nerds. The support is never forced or expected, but it helps tremendously. And I will always be very, very appreciative of all that you guys do to help my dreams be a reality. I literally wouldn't be here without all of you. And if you're looking for like-minded people who are just like you and love this game and want to see it grow and flourish, 
Wanderers, you are on the right channel. And if you want to find others to play with as well in this game, join my Discord. I will leave a link to join my Discord in the video description below. We are an amazing community here from my Twitch and my YouTube communities all joined together. But also I want to know, what do you think of the Joker so far? Let me know in the comments down below. But once again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out. Thank you so much for watching. Later, nerds! Yeah.